At a speech in the shadow of Parliament, Alberta's Premier brought a message to Ottawa about a full-blown crisis in the oil industry. So my friends, the toll on jobs is mounting. Anxiety around kitchen tables is rising. That anxiety took over the streets last week as the Prime Minister visited Calgary. And again yesterday when the finance minister was there. A call for action echoed by the Premier. Rachel Notley is waiting on help from the feds. So the reality is the federal government should be at the table on this. And in my view, there is very little excuse for their absence. She says she can't hold out any longer. And so Alberta will go it alone. Buying hundreds of rail cars to transport 120,000 more barrels of crude a day to get the oil to market. And she still wants the federal government to pitch in. Because we don't see an end to this in the medium term at this point. And this is something that is within the federal government's area of responsibility. And so we need them to pay more attention. Today, the federal transport minister had little to say about his government's intentions. Um, we're looking at it. But back home in Alberta, a different idea from the leader hoping to replace Notley as premier next spring, one seemingly out of character for a conservative who supports a free market. I am calling on the government of Alberta to act immediately to introduce mandatory curtailment of 10 percent of Alberta's oil production. He says it's the only way to tighten supply and force the price of oil up. But for the oil industry, neither of those solutions is ideal long term. These price differentials are largely the result of what we would consider to be market failures. Failures for effectively government to get the pipelines built in time so that we can get our product to market. That's also top of the wish list for many in Alberta, for Ottawa to get its pipeline plans back on track. The problem is they say there's a need for a short-term fix too, immediate relief for a struggling sector. Salima Shivji, CBC News, Ottawa.